Thanks, Tessa. Yeah, that's right. I am hanging out here with Jim Tillich of Breckridge Fine Art Gallery. Good to see you as well. Yes, good, good morning, morning to you. Thanks for coming in. And uh, how's the winter season go for you guys? Good. Yeah. Lots of people in town. It's, yeah, right. it's a lot of fun. Nice. And we're giving we're giving a lot of young people an education in art. That's great. People are bringing children in. It's it's kind of nice. Yes, it's nice. good. Yeah, Can't certainly. Complain. And you can certainly always encourage anyone of any age to come into the gallery to uh, because that yeah. art that kind of art, especially at the caliber that you provide, uh, should be appreciated by anyone. Mm -hmm. a, a lady brought her little girl in the other day, and the little girl was picking out the one she liked. She couldn't have been nice. more than nine years old. Oh, great! It's good. Yeah, it starts them early. Good. Yeah, definitely. Well, real quick, uh, tell me about the location of the Fine Art Gallery. 421 South mm -hmm. Main, right at Main Street at Park, and yeah. where the doors are open. Great destination, cross street from La Cima Mall, and at that corner again, Park and Main is where you're going to find the gallery. And uh, you're going to be able to see lots, a uh, lot of different artworks in there. Kind of take me through what types of mediums you'll, you'll find. Mainly oils, although okay. do I have bronzes yep. and uh, some watercolors. But oil is forever, as they say. Yeah. So I have impressionistic oils from all over the world. Any country that took up the French style of impressionism, learned from it and expanded it, produced beautiful art. Cool. And so I get those artworks from all over the world, wherever they may be. Yeah, and I'm, you certainly see that variation between country to country or regions uh, yes. from these different artists. You can tell like, well, this is kind of more of a Russian style, or this is a French style, or mm -hmm. even American. You could see some of the, the US artists in there. It's a totally different style. You see it, and language, culture, all these things, yeah. as well as the lay of the land, influence mm -hmm. the artist when they paint. Yeah. Makes it more interesting. Well, let's talk about an artist that we're going to feature today. This is a little bit more closer to home, a Colorado artist, Amy Dixon. Tell me about her. Amy Dixon, she's a very good artist, very interesting lady, a happy person. Mm -hmm. And when she paints, you get the idea. She's happy, and she's <laughs> figuring yeah. things out. Yeah. The one you're looking at now is called White Out. And uh, the colors are nice and, and bright, but it really is a tonal piece of art. See, when you paint a tonal piece of art, you take some colors and you add gray to it and you tone it down, which is where the word okay. came from. Nice. So a tonal piece of art has across the board, a, usually a gray base, and then the colors come off of that gently, and that's why it's tonal. So uh, this piece of art, uh, white out, uh, she was exploring the relationship between whites and grays and a little bit of color so that you get all these things that you want, but you have a statement, a mental statement, which each time you see it, sure. you should feel relaxed, yep. you should feel a little bit mysterious, <laughs> and then Amy says, look, feel what you want, think what you want, right. just enjoy my art, Definitely. And, and you do. She's very interesting. Oh, that is very interesting as well, and that <clears throat> process, I always love hearing about the process and how well connected you are with these artists, you know what, what's yes. going on kind of through them as they create mm -hmm. these pieces. Now, the second piece also is incredibly interesting. We were talking about it a little bit uh, before the interview, and uh, I'm kind of excited to talk about this because she was listening to a song, a, a uh, concerto piece, uh, while she was creating this one. Tell me about yes. that. Yes, she plays on the piano, canon okay. in D, yeah. and she listens to uh, classical music while she paints. Um, she did say, though, that her piano playing is best by herself. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yes, just like <laughs> my singing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, probably. Anyway, I'm sure she does well. But yeah. the point is, she felt like this piece of art was canon and D because in that, in that piece of music, you've got some power, you've got some quiet, you've got, you, you've got all the good things that go with, with a good mm -hmm. piece of music. So what she did in this piece of art, you, you can see that there are the three basic colors which she uses, red, yellow, and blue. And those colors are, of course, pure. You can't make them in any way other than with pigment. Yeah. But you can make all the other colors with red, yellow, and blue. So that's what she did. You'll notice in the painting, she's got red, a little bit offset, but red. And then she's got nice blues, and she's got the yellow then everything else goes from there. Right. So what you should feel is a splash of music, the concerto and the, the cymbals are clashing and things are going on. And yet there's a quietude that goes with it because cl classical music slows you down. Mm -hmm. It might so, speed you up for a little while right. when the cymbals clash yeah. or whatever. But uh, so her artwork is meant to make you think. And again, I asked her, I said, well, what do you think on, on this one? She says, well, what I see is a grouping of colors and almost a floral, almost a bouquet, lots of nice colors, nothing overdone, 
a little bit of a tonal background, and then uh, see what you like in it and enjoy that. Whatever you think it is, Absolutely. it is. Yeah. It's just that she says, I put flowers in it, sort of, and I put <laughs> it's kind a of mixture your of colors. interpretation as well. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Right. I like that. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> and then yeah. you get to feel, and it, uh, the artist uh, or, or Amy's drive for the viewer, whoever's in getting to see her work, it's really neat to just say, you know, take it for what it is. You know, I, right. I painted it my way. Now I want you to appreciate it in your own way. That's really a neat style. Yes, and with the artwork like this, even though it is Impressionism, it's leaning toward abstract yeah. because you don't see exactly what it is. Right, you only get you the idea. You just feel it. Yeah. Even the trees here, you know those are aspen trees right. and you know there's snow, but there is a lot of emotion coming out of there with the cool colors. Mm -hmm. Now this one with the warm colors, uh, highlighting it, blue is in the background, so blue is gonna take you back the lighter colors, the warmer colors, bring you forward. So that gives a little shape to what could be a bouquet. Definitely. I think it's a bouquet. Yeah, um, right. So but I, hey, for all you know, though, it's uh, just an open bag of Skittles. Somebody <laughs> dropped the flowers in the floor. Right, could be that too as well. Yeah, they, but they are very, very neat pieces. And you carry then Amy Dixon year-round as one of the resident artists? Yes. Okay. Yes, and, and there you see a snow piece and a summer piece, mm -hmm, definitely. And, and she doesn't follow the season, she just paints and just paints has a good time at yeah, it. Yeah, that's great, and I like that she takes that <laughs> influence from other things around her, and, right. and not just on a visual level, but on an audio level too, is what exactly. she hears through uh, that classical music, that's really And great. she's in good company. When uh, Marc Chagall painted the ceiling of the Paris Opera, yeah. he played music, and then he said, hmm, that sounds green to me. So one section yeah. is green-based, another section is a different color. There's probably six sections that he painted in that big 2,200 square foot right, artwork. Right. And uh, but he listened to music the whole way through. And then not only did was he influenced by the music, thinking, "Hey, that sounds red to me." He also at the bottom when he signed it, he put, for example, you can see there Wagner. Nice. Under the yeah. green one, under the green oh, cool. triangle. Yeah. So you see what influenced him at that time. Definitely. Tchaikovsky on another. And he wrote it at the bottom. You have to get a telescope yeah. to see it, but you can. Sure, you can but see. you can, you know, if you <clears> knew <throat> what uh, he was listening to on which section, you can have this whole kind of mixtape to, right, <laughs> to right. the artist, or to the whole art piece, and really appreciate it all. So level. she's in good company. Yeah, yeah definitely. Music, all painting, right. color. Yeah. yeah. Always an uh, art history lesson here with Jim, and thanks so much for coming in here. And uh, you have to check out, again, the Breckridge Fine Art Gallery, see what's uh, uh, going on in there, and appreciate some, um, some world-class fine art. And again, at the corner of Park and Main Street in Breckridge. How about hours real quick, Jim? Every morning, 10 till 8, every night. Okay, thanks. We're there. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Thank you. We will. You Great. too. We have the, uh, who's coming out? The Breck Rec Center interview coming up. ahead to uh, catch up with Tessa over at the Mountain Goat. And still, you're watching Win. So lots more show to come on this Friday edition. We'll be right back after this break.